had a little battery issue. Um, welcome to the Woodbury Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, please rise for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Once again, welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. We meet the second Wednesday of every month right here in Village Hall. Um, our next meeting will be in June, June 14th. I'd like to introduce our board at this time. Um, to your far right, we have um, Michael Osniak. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have Ed DeJesus, Rachel Bruce, Craig Brady, I'm Karen Unger. Our council and reporting secretary this evening is Kelly Norton. All right. Um, we have no executive session this evening. Uh, has everyone read the minutes from April 12th? Do I have a motion to accept? Second. Rachel? Rachel. And who's, who seconded that? Ed. Ed. Okay. Uh, any questions? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we have no new business, so we do have actions on decisions. We have one decision, shops at Woodbury. Review draft decision for variances for the construction of a multi-tenant directory pylon sign from Village Code sections 310-30D2C and chapter 310 attachment 11 relative to size of signs. Said property is located in the IB and HO zoning districts along Losey Lane and New York State routes 17, 32, and six in Central Valley and is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps as section 225, block one, lots 34.1, 34.22, and 75. So we have a couple of pages of facts and findings. What we did was we discussed the uh, total sign area proposed and whether or not it was compliant with the code. Um, we discussed the sign configuration and the stone veneer framework as to whether it was part of the uh, signage in measurement or not. And based on those, those discussions, the board determined that the total sign area proposed is 155 square feet and no variances are required. Per section A316-9 of the village code, this decision shall expire if a building permit is not obtained by the applicant within 180 days from the date of this decision. Should the proposal also require approval from the Village of Woodbury Planning Board, the 180-day expiration window shall run from the date of final Planning Board approval. The Board may extend this time for one additional period of 90 days if such extension is warranted by the particular circumstances. Do I have a motion? I'll make to, it. Who was that? Oh, okay, Ed. And a second on that. Second. Okay, thank you. Okay, how do you vote? Um, Mike? Aye. Uh, Ed? Aye. Rachel? Aye. Greg? Yes. And I vote aye. So. Shops at Woodbury don't, does not need any variances at this time. Okay, we have public hearings. First one is Mian. Do I say that right? Mian. Continuation of a public hearing for a temporary special permit for the construction of a dwelling unit for additional family members. Whereas pursuant to section 310-35, a temporary special permit may be granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals for an additional dwelling unit for the use of family members in accordance with certain requirements. Said property is located in the R1A zoning district along Gregory Lane in Central Valley and is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps as section 228, block six, lot 16. Um, is, is the applicant here? Um, let me, I'll say something then. If you have anything to add, just you can go to the podium, all right? Um, this was a public hearing that we had last month. We held it open. Uh, we had some questions as to whether the stairs would be considered part of the 25 cent percent extension, uh, expansion. 
and um, the building inspector said, no, we do not need to include those steps. Um, we still do not have a waiver for the water moratorium, so we cannot act on this this evening. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I believe it's set for um, May 25th. May 25th? Uh, is it? You don't can't have. advise you whether or not to go or not to go. You don't have to go. <laughs> it's not a requirement for your variance. But if they have any questions, they might want somebody there to answer them. Okay. All righty. Do we want to keep this public hearing open? Do we need to keep the public hearing? Well, is there anyone here from the uh, row one wishes to speak to this application? Row two? Row three? Did I miss anyone? All right. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? Make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the village will meet tomorrow, and May 25th will be the decision if they vote on that tomorrow. Yes. Yes. That would be the day that the decision. Right. The, the, right. The June 12th or 14th or something. June 14th. Okay. All righty. All right. Uh, next public hearing is Troxel, a public hearing requesting a temporary special permit for the use of a portion of the existing dwelling as a dwelling unit for additional family members. Whereas pursuant to section 310-35, a temporary special permit may be granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals for an additional dwelling unit for the use of family members in accordance with certain requirements. Said property is located in the R1A Zoning District at 5 Tweed Court in Highland Mills and is known on the village of Woodbury tax maps as section 249, block one, lot 62. Is the applicant present? Would you step to the podium and state your name, please? Yes, it's David Troxel. Is the uh, mic on? Yes, it sounds like oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so what you wanna do is take the existing finished basement, correct? That is correct. And turn that into, a, yeah, well, it already is finished and use it as a mother, uh, as a special permit, mother, daughter. Um, you purchased the house in 2021, correct? That is correct. And the Lily Ortillo was the previous owner and she's the one that did all the uh, finishing of the basement. And at that time, there was no permit for a mother, daughter. That is correct. But we do have the receipt of a certificate of occupancy and we have all the documents that show that the work that was done was all done to code. Um, you've currently have four members in your household. Will there be an additional two, or are two of them going to be living? No, just the two that are here, my brother and sister-in-law. <laughs> so it will be four, your family of four plus? Four total. Oh, oh four total. Sorry, four total. Okay, because I, I wasn't sure if it was four and then two more, which would make sense. Yeah, okay, um, if this is approved, you'd have to give their names you know, to the uh, building department. Okay. Okay. Do you have anything to add to this? Just to get the certificate of occupancy, the building inspector, Michael Pinella, um, asked the former owner to remove a cooktop. So we've remained, that can, that remains um, removed. So if we got the permit, we would plan on reinstalling it. Okay. And um, this applicant is also subject to the water moratorium? Uh, this is also subject to the water moratorium. Anything you wish to add, sir? No, that, that's it, thank you. All righty. Does the board have any questions for the applicant? No? Is no. there anyone uh, 
in the audience who wishes to speak? Yes, ma'am. Hi, good evening. I'm Rachel Lee. I'm a Brigadoon resident. I've been in our community for 20 years. So I know we, when we purchased our uh, home 20 years ago, uh, in our contract, it's a single family home. And I just want to double check. I know that the mail that was sent to us was mailed Thursday. We got it Thursday afternoon about this public hearing. And I know there was an appeal for a permanent, uh, a temp it's not a permanent, it's a temporary permit. Correct. And how long is the temporary permit? One year. One year. Okay. Me, the but only it can be renewed. Okay. No, the thing is, I'm just concerned that uh, this is, we're not setting up a presidential, because if one is applied to one family or to one uh, house, it will be applicable to all residents in our community? Well, it is part of the zoning code, and anyone who w wishes to follow the code with that can apply for the special permit. Oh, this is not the first applicant we've had. There are many special permit mother daughters or additional dwelling units or whatever you want to call but them. But they have to apply every, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. You can't I just didn't... build a, you know. They get the well, oh, right, inspection. right. The, 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 okay. I thought. Mm -hmm. It can no longer be used as an accessory dwelling. Like uh, the gentleman before you said, the cooktop needs to be removed and things like that, subject to the building inspectors. Okay. So it can't be a second uh, accessory mm -hmm. yeah. dwelling any longer after that. Oh, okay. Because our concern right now is not we're not setting up a precedent for all the people living in our community. No. No. Okay. Um, no, it's part of the zoning code, as council stated. And there are, we approved one proof. last year at least in, in Brigadoon as well. So there are, there's at least one I know of, probably two or three in Brigadoon, and there are many others throughout the, the village. Yeah, and like Council said, um, if uh, the applicant decides to eventually move away, the permit, the status for mother daughter goes away, and the next. Um, President or reapply. would have to reapply for that. Okay. So okay. we'll be setting a precedent. This is now going to be a two-family home forever. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else from the uh, audience wish to speak? Um, I'd like to enter into the public record a letter um, that was received from Dawn McFarland, a neighbor at Seven Berwick Circle. Uh, she opposes this application. Um, in part, she says it's a violation of the code and sets a dangerous precedent. She said um, it puts an undue burden on our infrastructure, uh, including roads, schools, and public services. Um, she says the safety is compromised in the community because of the increase in traffic and parking congestion, making it difficult for emergency vehicles, and basically says it has a detrimental effect on the character, safety, and infrastructure of the neighborhood. I just got that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions from the board? Do you? No? You want to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. <laughs> second. Wait, who seconded it? Ed. Sorry, I can't tell the I know. No worries. You're going to have to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we will discuss this um, at the end of the meeting tonight. Um, next on the agenda, we have Souffrant public hearing requesting a temporary special permit for the use of a portion of the existing dwelling as a dwelling unit for additional family members, whereas pursuant to section 310-35, a temporary special permit may be granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals for an additional dwelling unit for the use of family members in accordance with certain requirements. Said property is located in the R3A zoning district at 1155 State Route 32 in Highland Mills and is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps as Section 201, Block 1, Lot 26.22. Um, we received a letter from Ashley Souffron 
Um, they cannot attend this meeting this evening, so they would like to, ca excuse me, to carry it over, to move it over to uh, June 14th. Do I have a motion to, oh, wait a minute. I'll I should, open, oh, let me open, see if anybody wants to talk. Yeah. I yeah. Is, is anybody wish to speak to this application? No? Okay. You want to make the motion, Greg? No, oh, who made it? Who made that motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Ed made the motion. We have a second. I'll second. Rachel. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 So Sufrant will come back next month for a public hearing. Next on the agenda is Light Bright Signs Incorporated, Hampton Inn. Public hearing requesting variances for the construction of two additional wall signs from Village Code Chapter 310, Attachment 11, relative to the number of signs permitted in the IB District. Said property is located in the IB Zoning District along Center Drive and Central Valley and is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps <clears throat> as Section 225, Block 2, Lot 1.11. I see the applicant is present. Yes. <laughs> Would you state your name, please? Yes, Maria Rotundo with Light Bright Signs. Maria okay. And Rotundo. Maria, just Maria and then Rotundo. R O T U N D O. So basically what you want to do is to add two additional wall signs. Um, you already have two um, Hampton Inn signs, correct? Yes. And um, have we determined that the clearance signs are exempt from the signage? Okay. There are 3.2 square feet, Yeah. the clearance yeah. signs, and there's two of them? Right. Did you, they're existing. They're, and you would like to make they're them? They're existing, and we don't want to change them. It, it says clearance, 13 foot, 6 inch. Right. Is that for, like, trailers? It's on the canopy, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I know. I saw, so if somebody comes in with a motorhome or something, Yeah. you don't want them crumbling Yeah, in. so they weren't sure, uh, planning wasn't sure if you were going to use those clearance signs as square footage for the overall square footage of the site for signage. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll wait on that one. Um, so basically, you're taking the signs that are already there and replacing them with uh, different materials and... No. No? Uh, says, oh, yeah, we're, we're redoing the faces right, because of they the ones fade. that are there. Yes. And then you wish to add on that uh, side the... Yeah, the... In so it could be seen from Route 6. Yes. Yeah, and so then the welcome sign in the front. Yep. So the Hampton Inn is actually on the east elevation, and it, if you see the picture I submitted, um, that would help them greatly because you could see the sign. That whole side elevation you could see from the throughway. So that's why they want it, um, so they have more visibility. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing between that side elevation and the highway. So no one... There's some weeds. It's just, yeah, <laughs> trees, weeds. Yeah. Um, but if you look at that picture, it's very effective from the throughway. if we're granted that sign. It's, um... Yeah, no, I, I saw... It's that, sign yeah, C. I, I saw that, yeah. Okay. So basically, we have to just determine if we will allow them to add a second sign. Third. Third. I mean, a third sign. Yeah. I'm sorry. And we have to wait to see if the clearance signs have to be made smaller since they're 3.2. They're 3.2. Yeah. I mean, well, they, they could be, be three. <laughs> I could have I mean, just really three. Yeah, they're really small <laughs> to begin with. And I thought that signs related to public safety, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're blah, excluded. Yes. Aren't uh, included. Two but they shall not exceed three square feet each. Yeah. Please exceed three square feet each. Well, they already Did you see how small they are? I don't know when that they were uh, erected and when, if they were legally pre-existing or conforming. I don't have that answer. Which is why you have to ask Mike. Right. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh boy.
It sounds like it's dying down. So, like I was about to say, and then it went <laughs> off. I did reach out to the building inspector with some of these issues prior to meeting. I just haven't heard back yet. Um, so, I would be, I'd need that before I can, can let you know this information. Board, have any questions? Oh, and I, I didn't want the board to forget. We want um, pin-mounted letters, non-illuminated. They're just like a formed plastic. That For which say signs well. are we talking? The new, the new Hampton Inn sign or the yeah. welcome sign? The new sign. So there's the east elevation channel letters that you see from the highway. And then welcome letters that are 6.16 square feet. They say welcome pin-mounted plastic formed letters for the porta coche like And that, port that so portion is not these, illuminated. Not illuminated. But the the new Hampton sign in sign Hampton Inn sign yes. will be. Yes. Okay. And the three signs will match? Yes. Yeah, they're exactly the same square footage. And when you brought up the other two signs, they just want to redo the faces. So we're not touching the actual um, square footage or the can. We call it a can that the face sits in. We're not touching the cans. We're just replacing the plexi. Board of any questions? Want to think about it? Um, the east elevation. Um, I had occasion to be coming down Route 6, I think on the weekend, and due to vegetation that's there, there's several large trees, that entire fascia is essentially invisible from Route 6 until almost you're on top of it. I wonder in the winter if it's better. Well, I would, yeah. I would assume it is. But yeah. So several months out of the year, it's not visible, essentially. It certainly couldn't be seen from the throughway if it can't be seen from six. So is the intention to do tree removal or? No, I wasn't told they're removing any trees, no. Okay. Do they own that property? I, I don't know. I doubt I don't yeah, know either. I, I, I doubt it. It depends on what the lot line is. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, because the sample picture you have, of course, will be there probably taken sometime, you know, between December. Those and are March. old. Those are old pictures. So. Yeah. Yeah. When the, when it's not in bloom. Yeah. Which that's better than nothing. You uh, know. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it's such a. There's two highways there, so. Yeah, plus, you know, they're all the way tucked in the back of that plaza. Yeah. You know, so yeah. they feel like they don't have good visibility from all the action in the front of the mall. <laughs> and the, the other question I have is the, the welcome signs. Mm -hmm. Is that a new part of the Hampton Inn corporate yeah. motif? Yeah, they add the welcome, yeah, to the porta cachets so people see it. I mean. So that's a new standard from, yes. from Hampton Inn corporate, if you will? Yes, they would like that with all the Hampton Inns. Okay. They're not too big either, and they're not illuminated. They don't say Hampton Inn. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. all I have. Any, anyone else? Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak to this application? We got to keep the public hearing open until we find out about the clearance signs and whatever else might come up between now and then. Okay. All right. So I'll make a motion to carry this public hearing over to our next meeting. I have a second. 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 <laughs> Let Mike have it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 So we will meet again on June 14th. Okay. So you should I'm be attending. here. Okay. Yeah. Or another representative. If no, you. no, I'll be here. Okay. okay. Thank you. All righty. Thank you.
Okay, next on the agenda we have the Woodbury Common Pylon Sign public hearing requesting variances for the construction of a pylon sign from the Village Code sections 310-30 D, 2A and C and chapter 310 attachment 11 relative to the number and size of signs permitted in the IB and LIO districts. Said property is located in the IB and LIO zoning districts along Red Apple Court in Central Valley and is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps as section 225, block one, lot 70.2. And I see an applicant is here. Good evening. Good evening. What I'm is your name, sir? I'm Bill Pendergast with Simon Property Group. Okay. So what you want is a, a permission for a freestanding sign? Correct. Um, I assume this is a multi-tenant sign? Correct. Okay. Um, you had a sign that you said was moved? Yes. Yeah, so so just, no one can see it? Was that a multi-tenant sign also? Just to give the history of this, there originally when Woodbury Commons prior to Route 32 being reconstructed, we had two entrances and two signs. Um, when the DOT came in and widened the road, uh, the one sign that was at the main entrance was removed and it can't be put back because it would be in the DOTs right away and it would be downhill severely, you wouldn't even see it from the road. So that sign was taken and relocated to the new entrance of, of uh, Nininger Road. So that sign that was moved is the, is the one On that's Nininger at the On Road right. at the traffic circle. Right. Um, the other sign that, that was there, still is there, it's atop the retaining wall from, I guess it's the B entrance or the, the entrance prior to the main entrance. There's one there. Uh, this sign would be located between the first and the second entrance. Um, it's off of oh, Route 32. Route 32. Uh, it's beyond the DOTs right away. Uh, and it would have multiple tenants uh, on both sides of the sign, so it would be visible from both directions on 32. Would it be the same tenants on both sides? Correct. Okay. And just as a reference, the colors of the sign are generally, by corporate standards for us, are pretty much consistent black and white. We don't have a mixture of colors and tenant colors added. All right. Yeah, and I, I think going back to, I think the planning board referred us here due to the area variance of the signs, um, the height of the sign, and also the, the width of the sign. And just in general, um, they, they calculated the width for the entire panels of the sign. So we have the tenant panels, and then the upper panel it says Woodbury Commons. Um, and if you measure the actual letter area of that upper sign, it's about half of what was the planning board had said it was. The total area of the sign, if you just calculate the letters, it's about 135 square feet. If you calculate it with the panels, where the Woodbury part is, is 222 square feet total signage. Now so we're not sure of the interpretation of that. Are you including the, uh, the side framework there? We didn't include the columns itself, but the panels that the signs were mounted to. And what about the base? Um, the base, we added the base because there's a grade change. Yeah, I saw and the it picture. It's, off. Yeah. So the average height, the maximum height is about 27 and a half feet. The average height is under, 20, under 27, but it's more than the 25 that's allowed. But what we did is we lined the base up with the level of the curve on the road, and we just took the base and actually counted it as to level the sign to being level. So the sign from the platform up is 25 feet. And the width of the okay. sign is allowed to be 20 feet, but because we have the appendages on the top that are common uh, to the other signs at the commons, it's like decorative right. molding, it makes it 21 feet. And th this is the sign that's gonna be located pretty much across from the school? Correct. Did we have a discrepancy on the height? It, I know it, somewhere it said 25 and somewhere it said 28 feet, and you're telling us now 27.5 feet? I think it was 27 and a half, but it may have been rounded off to 28 when we put oh, the application. Okay. Sorry. The text of the application. Yeah, so I, I know I saw it somewhere. 
if it Natalie's Natalie's memo maybe, yeah, has, has, has the correct dimensions. Okay. So the portion around the printing, you did not count in the square footage? We did. Uh, so in the application, it, and from what the planning board gave us from, from Natalie, she calculated the area of the signage total to be 222 square feet for each side. The, the code apparently seems to allow 200 square feet. Not, for multi-tenants. Not total, but total for each total for the entire sign, so Correct. it would only if allow you 100 per, per side. No. No. That's kind of what we were told, so that's why I think we need clarification. It, if it's 18, yeah. They are more than 18 inches, so then I'm assuming it's 100 square feet per side. I don't know about that. Because there is some dimensional issue. Again, I think the point of it is that if we need the variance for the size, making those sign panels smaller really wouldn't do any good from the traffic and the speed that, that cars come and go on 32. How? So what's the width of the, so if we're looking at it side on, what's the width? The width of the box? Yeah. yeah. Probably a foot and a half. It's 18 inches. Because it's 18 it's inches. It's really important to yeah. know that yeah. actual the sign of the column, the, the, like the dimension of the of, columns? This part of your application. You the width. That. Uh, yes. I would say it's, looking at it, based on other dimensions that are on here, it's probably about 18 inches. I think we would need, yeah, we need a, uh, <laughs> well, we, we need make, a more accurate measurement for the width. <laughs> So that's not the width of the sign. You're saying it's the, the depth of the structure. Right, yeah, I'm interested right now in the depth of the right. column. Well, if we, have to, if we have to keep it under yeah, 18, okay. if we have to keep it under 18, that is very doable. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop and measure. <laughs> okay. So. When you calculated the top? That in itself, if you calculate the entire black area that it's in, right. is about 135 square feet. Okay, 135 square feet. And you're saying that if you, if measure you the drew letters, a box around the lettering. It's about 55 square feet. You including the white border that's around there? No, I just included the black part of the. The, Do they include it? The it's inset part of the structure. sign, the black portion. They, they need to tell the yeah, because <coughs> the white border is actually behind the sign. It's what? It's actually the white part of that frame is actually behind the sign. It's behind the black portion. So the is black it? panel is mounted to the white border. Correct. Okay. Yeah, you've got basically the, the base has, has two elevations, and then you've got the tenants have one, and then the top one, and then you have the uh, decorative thing on the top, so you've got a lot of different configurations just within that one sign. Correct. If you, if you, if you take out the tenant portions, the, the monument sign that was moved is almost identical to the upper portion of this sign. It's the same logo, same lettering. Um, it's a little smaller than this, but it's, it's generally the, the uh, normal sign that Simon Premium Outlets uses throughout the country. Do you have to go before their zoning boards too? What's that? Do you have to go before their zoning boards also? Sometimes, <laughs> but not me sometimes. <laughs> Mike? Uh, quit. How, old, how, how much smaller is the old sign compared to this? I think the old sign was probably around 16 feet. Um, but again, it was a ground-mounted monument ground sign, zone. and it was right at the entrance. And it was actually like three feet off the road. Is the height the same now with 
no, the height is be much... the same as the old sign, even because you have to back it up and go to the grade, but the sign is higher, but is it the same visibility as was the old sign? The old sign really didn't have great visibility for a lot of reasons. It, it had, there were a lot of trees along Route 32, so unless you were really seeing it, paying attention, you wouldn't really see the sign. But it, it, was, it was there, and then as time grew, um, you know, trees grew up and you couldn't see the sign as much anyway, but it, it was right out at the road. It literally was yeah. three feet off of 32, so you could see it. So this sign is technically higher in the visibility Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the idea is that when you get onto Route 32 or you're coming from the north or coming from the east or the west off of 17, you'll be able to see it from a distance because the other signs you can't see at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sure. That, that first sign was not a multi-tenant sign, though, correct? No, it was, it was a just the reduced, monument right, sign. Right. Correct. Is this thing with um, six panels on each side? Correct. And they, I guess they pay a premium to be on the sign? Uh, I don't know. That. Mike, what did you just ask? <laughs> I didn't hear I, you. <laughs> I asked if, um, if it's staying at six panels on the side. Oh, oh I see. Yes, um, it will stay at six panel and the same tenant would be on both sides. Okay. So I guess what we have to, well, we've got a lot of things we need to do. Um, we have to look at the framework, see if that's included, if, we sh if it should be included in the uh, signage. You did not include it, correct? We did not include it because the interpretation was that if the panels were larger than 18 inches, that made it a two-sided sign. But if it's the thickness of the columns that determine that 18 inches, then that structure we can keep under the 18 inches. And you know we're talking about this, the yes. thin side. Yeah. Okay. Depth. The side profile. <laughs> the depth, yes. Right. <laughs> That's a good thing. choice of words. <laughs> And, with in depth. Any questions from the board? Let's see. So the sign that was moved is now at the third entrance there by Nininger. That sign was removed. So you're just basically asking for a new sign by the main entrance. Well, what used to be the main entrance, I don't Correct. know which one is. Okay. And, and just as a reference to do another monument sign there, you, you wouldn't see it because of the setback from the DOT. Oh, so, where the original sign was. Yeah, you, that. yeah. First of all, we could put it at the end. Well, they changed the whole configuration yeah. there, too, and with the lights. Even to and put it off the road, the 30 feet required by the DOT, then you wouldn't see the sign. It would be basically a small standing sign sitting in the middle of a grass area. So this, I think, gives more visibility to everybody traveling on both directions on 32. Maybe. So we need more precise measurements. Is that do you need a more precise measurement to advise on that? And the, they may want to look at the two provisions regarding the sign area and let you know what they should think. Um, so if you look at the code, and it's section 31030D2C1 and D2C4. Okay. She's writing them down. <laughs> She's the, the court reporter. <laughs> um, those, those are the two provisions in the code that talk about the calculation of sign area. Okay. And also uh, D2C2, that's where we need to know the width slash depth of the sign and whether it's 18 inches. It's important for the board to know how the signs are actually affixed or are However, that's mm -hmm. put together. They're going to need to know that for purposes of considering the C1 and C4 provisions to calculate the sign area. Because okay. it's not just the box around the lettering and stuff like that. So okay. It all Got it. Yeah. Again, we went kind of by what Natalie wrote up, and I, now I well, think we have to do a little more, a little more digging. Yeah, it was, it was accurate, but sometimes it, this provisions of the code is okay. important. Got it. That is clear cut as we it's would like. It's a good starting point. Yeah. Any other questions from the board right at this moment? 
Is there any? This would be the second sign, right? It's no, technically the third sign. The second sign was permitted uh, several years ago. There were, when the, the Commons was renovated in 2012 to 2018, all the signage on the property was completely changed. There was a sign added or a sign replaced at the main entrance, and then there was a second sign. If you remember the old drive that used to come in off the throughway, it used to kind of come right into the center. Well, that sign was relocated to the top of the retaining wall as you come in that first entrance. And as you come down that drive and you look straight ahead, there's a sign mounted on the retaining wall just says Woodbury Common. That's all it says. That was the first sign. And then the second sign was the, one was was the main entrance, and then it was moved. To net but apparently, the second sign was never approved as a second sign. So they came back to the zoning board and got the second sign approved uh, about three or four years ago. Um, now we are asking for the third sign because we now have three entrances that the DOT has now put into the center. What's the third entrance? This. So the third entrance is off of Nininger Road, the traffic circle? Right, but that's the one where the sign was moved right. to. Then you have the first entrance into the commons, which is kind of like the old one, but it's on 32. So if you come up off of right. Route 17, that's the first entrance. And now we're asking for this sign to be placed between the first entrance and the main entrance to the center. Across from the school. Across from the school, directly across from the school. Okay. The closest entrance to here which is three lanes of traffic out and two lanes of traffic in. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look through it. We're carrying it over anyway, so it's not, yeah. not a make or break. Do you wanna say anything else right now? Mm -hmm. No. Anyone else from the board? Anyone from the public wish to speak to this application? We do need to carry this over because we need more precise measurements and we, can we need do that. to, yeah. It's not a problem. And I'll read over those sections and <laughs> we'll address those as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to carry this over to the June meeting? Rachel? Second? Second. Mike. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. So we will now have deliberations, I imagine. Yes. So we have a discussion for the Troxel um, application. So, I mean, I looked at the, uh, all the documentation that we had that was submitted, and we have all the, uh, you know, the, the, like he said, that um, Mike had made them remove the cooktop, which they did. Uh, they have a certificate of occupancy from that. Um, all the work, the electrical and all that work, was all done to code. There's all different certificates attached to the uh, application. Mm -hmm. um, the letter that we received, I don't think, is, is applicable to this application because um, the people are living there now. There's nothing being expanded. There's nothing, you know. No, I, mean, um, I, I think that they were worried about the fact that they, it was setting the precedent that once it becomes a multifamily house, it was going to stay that way. And I think the reapplication, yeah. once the house is sold or something, I think eases. That's when the most yeah. And I was thinking that perhaps they thought mm -hmm. they were going to build onto it. To yes. Add, you know, and instead of not yeah. realizing that it was an existing. So. Exactly. Um, no, it's, you know, there's, there's no addition, so there's no variances needed. No. No. And um, 
all of the provisions of the code allow for family members mm -hmm. um, as an, an additional dwelling unit and we've done it many times the precedent is there and it's not I guess the concern maybe from Mrs. McFarland is to your point two family but it's not going to be a two family exactly it's a mother daughter it has to mean, always be family members who are inside yeah, family members yes. yep. and if and no more than two and no more than two so and the family yeah. members have to literally be listed with the village right Correct. right yeah, yeah. on the yeah. on the permit they have to be listed so i think your neighbors fears they would are quelled basically. i mean i just want to just want to ask one quick question if i may just because i'm having a little bit What's the actual measurement of the house compared to the, is it, is it relevant, is it, has, is it over like, what, like a third? I have, I have to double check. I don't doesn't know, matter. but it doesn't matter because it's pre-existing. Pre mm -hmm. Okay, all right. If they were adding, yeah. it could only be 25%, okay. up to maximum 25%. We learned that in our way last yeah. time. I just don't want to use the word, the term pre-existing because it has a legal context. Yes. But oh, it just, okay. it exists. It, right, it okay. Thank you for clarifying. That was just I just wanted to make sure. The twenty-five percent only applies to an addition. Correct mm -hmm. is the right way to phrase that. <laughs> so, what do you want to do? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, special permit for Troxel. Second. Authorize the drafting of a decision. Sorry. Consistent with tonight's discussions because they still need to get a waiver. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yes, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll second that. And So uh, you'll need to come in, sign some whatever papers, and give the names of the people who will be living there. And if they need anything else, they will let you know. Um, I believe that. Actually, first they need the right. water. Or, I was just going to say that. The, water. Um, the village clerk will have documentation on that. You can just give them a call. They'll have you submit some information. Um, and they can. But the sooner you get that in, the better. That way you can be on a sooner board That's it. Anything else? No. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Wait, wait, can I? Oh. I think we should recognize that tonight is uh, Sunrise Last Night. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, um, Karen is retiring from this board after many years of service tonight. Um, and you've done an amazing, amazing job. Thank you. We will miss you. I think I'll miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good or bad? <laughs> no, I will. I will. It's probably a bittersweet. I'm sure. <laughs> so Rachel made a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> One step closer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you.